are the Arizona Cardinals failing Marvin Harrison Jr.? It's something I never thought we would po poise like I pose on the show. And after last year and how well Drew Petzing was doing as the OC and how much Kyler Murray liked this offense and Trey McBride was blossoming, I, I felt very confident that Marvin Harrison Jr. was going to succeed. I think you did as well. And I, I there's still an avenue to that, but I, I'm going to take the information right now at face value. So I'm leaving Gila River yesterday, and I, I got a text message from, from somebody. And they're like, man, it, it's frustrating that that this – this team can't even produce like a 100-yard receiver on on regularly, right, from a fantasy perspective or whatever. And I'm like, I'm going to go back and I'm going to chart the 100-yard wide receivers, not tight ends, running backs, wide receivers during Drew Petzian's tenure. Because mm -hmm. I thought back last year, and I'm like, well, they won in Pittsburgh, but that was tight end and Higgy Bear and Trey McBride. So I did that, and I posted it, and you guys have probably seen it by now. Drew Petzian has been the you. I haven't seen it. Okay. Drew Petzing has been the offensive coordinator for the Arizona Cardinals now for 23 games. That's not a sample size. That's a, that's a lot, right? That's mm -hmm. It's who you are. And he had Michael Wilson last year and some Hollywood Brown and some Greg Dorch. And this year he's had Marvin Harrison Jr. and those players, et cetera. He has one 100-yard wide receiver to show for it, and it was week two in the greatest performance of the year, MHJ with Kyler Murray in one quarter had that. Yeah. He is he is batting one for 22. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, big deal, Johnny. They don't need a 100-yard receiver to win. In today's NFL, that ratio is unacceptable. It's laughably bad. You have a $50 million quarterback. You have weapons that we're high on. You have to be better than that. And then I couple that, Bo, with the fact that Kyler Murray is on pace to throw for like 3,200 yards. And then I see on Twitter this morning that there's one quarterback in the NFL that does not have a first down completion on third and long this year, and it's mm. Kyler Murray. And I add all that together, and I'm sure there are other statistics that support this. Drew Petzing and his schematics are holding back this passing game, and it's irre irrefutable. Marvin Harrison Jr. unfortunately cannot succeed right now in the current byproduct of this Cardinal offense. You can't convince me otherwise. I'm sorry for your horse show of a morning, man. I mean, that, that was just one thing after another you uncovered. Bad stats, that, man. That it was tough for you to, it was a tough little Monday for my guy, Johnny. I, and I apologize. I'm here for you. It's not your fault. If I could wrap my arms around you, I, I would do it like Robin Williams and Goodwill Hunting. Damon, you get the reference there? Ew. All right. Good job. Um, look, I, I agree. Like in modern day NFL to have one 100 yard receiver in, in 22 games, 23 games, that that's the, that's the makings of, of a poverty franchise. Like you have to be able to, like you have, I think the biggest issue here is you believe you've got an embarrassment of riches and you're trying to spread the wealth, but really what would do you the best is just lean on your primary playmakers, identify them, lean on them and, and throw to them often and as much as you possibly can. Like, I, I think Trey McBride made it clear, like, he's he's still the guy that broke out for 80 catches for 800 yards last season and was one of the top five tight ends in the league. And then Marvin Harrison Jr., the guy he utilized the fourth overall pick on and the one person that has broken the streak as far as no 100-yard receiver. And by the way, those are, those are largely broken plays by Marvin in that game. Can we agree on that? Like, scramble drills with he and Kyler yeah. Murray. Like he's he's come out and said like these weren't designed routes, so it's not like you're cooking and Drew's going to his bag and we've got we're scheming him open. Marv was getting open that game. Can we can we agree on that? For which game against the Rams? If yeah, you go back and look at all the clips we posted of Marvin talking about that. That wasn't even the route scramble drill. Well, look, look I mean that was that's part of the 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 play design though too. I mean that that's you know where does Marvin Harrison Jr. go? When Kyler Murray is extending plays, it's not like they're just out there playing on the playground. And but my like, pushback: Where's where the no. out routes? Where the where the comebacks? Where the slants? Where's where's the motion? Where's the right. end arounds? Where how? Let's put them in the slot and do a dump off. Where where is any of that? And it, it's it's a thing that you know people are going impatient with, and and I understand why that that is because you look at the talent, you look at just other cases around the league and people want to point to Malik neighbors and people want to point to Brian Thomas jr. 
But, you know, I mean, I think at the, at the same time, I'm going to take what, you know, Michael Wilson, who who lived it as somebody who was a, came into this league, into this offense and understood the difficulties and just the, the development, and the maturation of the, the, the rhythm and timing offense, that it, it's a little bit tougher. I mean, it's it's just it's not as easy for a rookie, unfortunately, come in and just get the grasp of it. And we've seen it. It's on full display even before he went out yesterday. We yeah. were robbed of Amar of the game, unfortunately, because of a concussion, and he's in per- concussion protocol. Like there needs to be some sort of forcing of the issue and putting him in a position to be more successful in this passing attack, no doubt about it. But at the same time, there also needs to be a bit of patience that's being preached for a guy who's just started his NFL career. And like, I'm not going to hang my hat on the statistics because I know they're they're a little gaudier than maybe like it, it, what's it, what's going on in actuality. Because like 131 yards of that did come in the first quarter, and two of those touchdowns came in the first quarter of one game. Um, but at the same time, like he's he's doing what he's doing. I mean, from we look at his pro football focus grading to to everything, like he's still a guy that's playing at a high level. Like, can can you get him in a position to to thrive even more so than that? That's what people are craving right now. Well, I think that's a bigger indictment of Drew Petsy, in my opinion. Like Marv is not. The issue, like, sure, you want to talk about a learning curve and people are saying he body catches too much, but I- I'm sorry. Like, all of us are watching it, and it just looks difficult. It does. It doesn't look fluid and natural. And I am just always going to give the player that was elite in college that's dubbed a generational prospect that now goes to a franchise with an offensive coordinator that can't highlight a number one receiver, I'm going to give the player the benefit of the doubt. Just like for years and years, I give Kyler Murray the benefit of the doubt coming to Arizona and not having a positive infrastructure, right? It's not it's not as easy as Paris Johnson Jr. playing tackle a high level at Ohio State. Now yeah. he's playing tackle a high level for the Cardinals. It's different, right? So right. like Mar- Marv, sure, let, you can give him a little bit of a blame. But I, I think, again, when you look at the advanced metrics, his separation, pro football focus, his numbers there, I think it's an indictment on, on this team. I, I do think like – you know, you you posted it earlier today, reported on it, like Marv's in concussion protocol. Mm-hmm. I think Marv right now, out of everybody on this roster playing a key role, needs practice reps to be able to play and play at a high level because there's a disconnect with he and Drew Petzing. And then there's inconsistencies with he and Kyler Murray. So if he's not participating in practice this week, you can't just roll him out there Monday, even if he's cleared, in, in my opinion. Like, I, I expect Marvin not to play on Monday night. Well, they, they, they're going to benefit from the extra day. They're, they're not going to hit the, the practice field until Thursday. And then I, I would say Friday is probably the key day. And then they'll, they'll get the extra day of practice on Saturday. And they'll probably make a determination, obviously, by then, if he's in or out, come Monday night. Zay Jones activated under the 53. That that could be just, you know, them. I mean, his exemption was over anyway, so he was going to go to the 53. But does it give you a bit of a safety net? I hope not. Um, like I, I agree, like he's gonna have to practice to play, and we'll see if if he's if if they're gonna handle him with kid gloves like they did with Trey McBride, and and it's not like Max Melton where he's back out there wearing the yellow non-contact jersey. Um, it, it's we got a long way to go to figure out what his status is come come Monday night, but I, I'm not I'm not gonna immediately rule him out. Like it's 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 it would be a big blow in, in as far as – and it's more so than just the wins and losses. It's, it's getting Marvin Harrison Jr. on track in this offense. And, like, to say that it's Drew Petzing and only Drew Petzing for – I mean, I, I just see these – between quarterback and wide receiver, they're just not on the same page. We're just not seeing it. And to say, like, hey, that's all on Petzing, I, I kind of – I'm going to push back on that. I, I don't know. I've seen Kyler Murray Cook with, you know, Farrell Cooper as a rookie and – yeah, but look uh, at last offense. year. You have to go off of this offense. Like Cliff Kingsbury's offense is obviously easy to grasp for rookies. It was a col- it's a college scheme. I got it's it's set up to for people to be able to get right into it and perform, right? And and maybe like is that an indictment on this offense? Is it I too think complex? so. I, I clearly but, well, Dre, Trey Trey Benson doesn't know what he's doing when he comes in a game. Marvin Harrison Jr. There's immediate disconnect with he and Kyler Murray on the first possession. So if you're gonna, if you're then gonna, you, you if you get Trey Benson to you know, operating at a James Conner level, what's it gonna look like? What, 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 if you get if you get Marvin Harrison Jr. operating in this offense at a Trey McBride level where he knows it, it backwards and forwards, what's it gonna look like? I, I mean, how long is that gonna take? 
I mean, you're you're asking for a lot of leash here. You're, you're, you're sitting here in, after week six. I, I'm sorry. Like they've they've been around since May. Marvin didn't have a, a regular offseason. He had a let's get ready for the season offseason. You're telling me like Malik Neighbors can pick up Brian Dable's scheme quicker than Marvin can pick up Drew Petzing's scheme. I, I just I feel like it's less about picking it up and more about like this is the scheme. The scheme is we don't highlight big time receivers. We have a certain way we want to win. And if you were going to be that staunchly committed to that mindset, and I've said this before, you should not have taken him. We all city like the mayor. 